Before we discuss what are the methods of sampling in probability and non-probability, it is good to know first what are the differences between probability and non-probability sampling in general. Our discussion is divided into three sections and the first section is we are going to cover probability sampling by answering the questions such as what is probability sampling when to use probability sampling what are the methods of probability sampling and what are the advantages and disadvantages of probability sampling the section B we are going to cover non-probability sampling by answering the questions such as what is non-probability sampling when to use non-probability sampling what are the methods of non-probability sampling and what are the advantages and disadvantages of non-probability sampling and in the end of our discussion we are going to make conclusion or summary let's start from point a probability sampling by answering the question what is probability sampling in probability sampling the sample from a population are chosen using a method based on randomization or probability theory Randomization or probability theory means each element in the population has an equal and independent chance of selection in the sample. Equal and independent means equal implies that the probability of selection of each element in the population is the same, that is the choice of an element in the sample is not influenced by other considerations such as personal preference. The concept of independence means that the choice of one element is not dependent upon the choice of another element in the sample. It means the sample which are included in a study must be free from any factors that is independence there are two general types of probability techniques of sampling the first one is probability sampling method of sampling which gives the probability that our sample is representative of population. This is also known as probability sampling. Sample is representative of population means, for example, the number of population is 100 students. Then, the sample chosen by a researcher is 25 students. 25 represents 100. In other words, the sample represents the population. That is the meaning of sample is representative of population. And the second techniques of sampling is a probability sample is one that has been selected in such a way that every element chosen has a known probability of being included for example the number of population is 100 students then the sample chosen is 25 students probability of being included means the population each of the member of the population in this case there are 100 students they have equal chance to be 
25. Once again, its member of the population has equal chance to be included in the sample. In this case, the number of the population is 100. Then they have equal chance to be 25. Next, there are two laws of probability sampling. The first point is law of statistical regularity and the second law is law of inertia of large sample. Law of statistical regularity means this law involves the probability principle in which a small sample may be good representative of the population. It can be done if the subjects of sample are selected at random or by randomization. And also, the conclusions drawn from the sample may be generalized for the population. Here is an example. The number of a population is 500, while the sample chosen is 50. The way the 50 people are taken must be by randomization. If it is done, then the 50 may represent the 500, or the sample may represent the population if the way the sample is chosen is done by randomization. And the second law is law of inertia of the large sample. It means it is the corollary of the first law. A large sample is more stable or good representative as compared with small sample. So this is very logic. For example, the number of the population is 500 and all of them are taken to be the sample or the source of the data. Let's make it logic. For example, if you want to get an information, then which one will be more thoughtful? 3 persons or 10 persons? And the answer must be 10 percent. So, the more the sample, the more thoughtful the result or the conclusion of a research. That is the meaning of law of inertia of the large sample. The next point is when to use probability sampling. So, probability sampling is used when the research is to study a particular subgroup within a greater population. In other words, if your research deals with a large population, then using probability sampling will be helpful. And the second is if the research result is used for generalization, it means when the sample represents the population. Now we continue to the next point. What are the methods of probability sampling? The methods which are used in probability sampling Number one, it can be done by simple random sampling, by systematic sampling, stratified sampling, cluster random sampling, 
multi-stage sampling well in this video I will just let you know the names of the methods while in fact in discussing them they will have specific video because I want to make this very clear in how to apply by both manual and by using software or computer so just find my video deals with them now we're talking about the advantages and disadvantages of probability sampling and i have to let you know that this is just in general because if in specific we'll be talking about the specific sampling methods for example simple random cluster and so on so once again just for general the advantages of probability sampling is it lacks of bias dealing with simplicity it can it is convenience and is of use it creates samples that are highly representative of the population and also it creates strata or layers that are highly representative of strata or layers in the population especially we're talking about cluster sampling but once again I have to tell you dealing with them in detail or in specific I discuss them in specific videos just find them Relating to the advantages of probability sampling, it might not work well if unit members are not homogeneous. For example, if they are different from each other. So, in other words, probability sampling is good when the sample is. homogeneous and sometimes it can be tedious and time-consuming especially when they when creating larger samples now we're discussing non-probability sampling by answering the question what is non-probability sampling Non-probability sampling designs are used when the number of elements in a population is either unknown or cannot be individually identified. A population is either unknown or cannot be individually identified means so it does not involve random selection. Then the odds of any member being selected for example cannot be calculated it is not intended to be used to infer from the sample to general population in statistical terms now we are going to answer the question when to use non-probability sampling non-probability sampling designs are used when the number of elements in a population is either unknown or cannot be individually identified therefore if the number of the population cannot be identified then randomization is impossible and the research does not aim to generate results it means the sample doesn't represent the population as we have in probability sampling what are the methods of non-probability sampling the methods of non-probability sampling it can be done by quota sampling accidental sampling or convenience sampling 
judgmental sampling for purposive sampling expert sampling and snowball sampling again i have to tell you dealing with these methods i discuss them in my specific video okay now we're going to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of non-probability sampling and this is also in general because if we talk them in specific we need to discuss specific non-probability sampling methods or techniques so the major advantage of non-probability sampling is that it is also easy to use and can also be used when it is impossible to conduct probability sampling. So the keywords here, when it is impossible to conduct or to take the sample by probability sampling, then non-probability sampling will be the best way to get the sample. And the major disadvantage of this sampling Number one, it is impossible to know how well we are representing the population. Yes, of course, because in this case, normally, the number of the population is unidentified first by the researcher. Therefore, it is impossible to know how well we are representing the population. And the second, we can't calculate confidence interval and margin of error. Now we come to conclusion and summary. Dealing with meaning, probability sampling means the sample from a population are chosen using a method based on randomization or probability theory in which each element in the population has an equal and independent chance of selection in the sample while non-probability sampling designs are used when the number of elements in a population is either unknown or cannot be individually identified then it does not involve random selection or equal chance the ways of the sample chosen in probability sampling it, it is done by randomization while for non-probability sampling it is done by non-random in probability sampling the population is fixed and known therefore this is also termed as predetermined predetermined means the researcher identified the population first before the sample is chosen while it is different with non-probability it is not fixed and unknown in other words that is the opposite of predetermined the way probability sampling is done normally because the research result is conclusive or unbiased while taking the sample by non probability then the research result is commonly aimed for exploratory therefore this is biased the sampling types of methods by probability sampling techniques it can be done by simple random sampling systematic sampling stratified sampling cluster random sampling or multi-state sampling while the type of sampling by non-probability sampling it can be done by quota sampling accidental sampling for convenience judgmental sampling or purposive sampling expert sampling and snowball sampling once again dealing with these types of sampling or techniques we'll discuss them one by one one by one. I promise you, we'll discuss them clearly 